you need to constantly be like moving your body, shielding the like the naughty bits. In life in general, don't that never never flash your bad bits. <laughs> I'd love it if you could get like a little screen on your on someone's forehead and you just see like the mental like cinema just going on in there. A rule for life is always leave people wanting more. That's definitely a rule in magic. If if you leave them, if you just hit them like with trick after trick after trick and then they're like they're done, then you've you've, you've failed because you've not you need to ignite curiosity, but you can't extinguish it. So you, you need to keep them asking you, oh, can I see another one? Can I see another one? And if you get to the point where they're like, oh, thank you so much, that was lovely, we're, we're all right now, then you, you've lost. Because you need to always leave them wanting more, because otherwise, what's the point? And like, tension is everything in magic. And that's one of the main things that I would say, beginners in magic, even people who've been doing it for a long time, it's like the one thing that they completely forget about because when you're performing magic, you've got that point where the magic is gonna happen and you know when it's gonna happen and you need to create tension in order to build it to get those like reactions that you want. If you're doing like a card trick and you reveal their card in such a nonchalant way was, and this, is, this was it, then it's like you've missed out all of the possibility that you could have had. Whereas if you just like place the card in their hands and then you just don't say anything. And then you draw everyone's attention to what came before and you build it up and then you turn it over slowly. You've just got tension, tension, tension. And people are like, <gasps> Poof, and then, oh, everything goes crazy because you've given them that, you've, you've, you've orchestrated that moment where you've built the tension up to the point where they just can't hold it in anymore. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're performing is at the point where the tension is gonna be broken, they'll like make a joke and that gets rid of all attention in such a bad way because you've given them a, a release so that the laughter is the release but it's not the release that you've been building up for you want the you want the release to be where they go crazy with their reactions not to be like laughing because they'll, they'll 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 make a joke and then they'll do the reveal but the tension is already gone because they're all laughing and they're like ha, 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 oh yeah ha, ha. And it's like you've missed the whole thing like you're telling stories and and they're the, the, the people who you're performing to are the characters in that story. You make them the stars of the show. Like you're like the initiator, you're the orchestrator, you make sure it's gonna go in the direction that you want it to go, but you make them feel important and special. And I think people crave that every day of their lives. People wanna feel important, they wanna feel special, they wanna feel part of something. And I think it's a nice thing to be able to do to give them that experience in the context of performing magic. All right, Johnny, can you feel all the cards? Yes, yes you can, all right. They're all gonna disappear. <laughs> Apart from your card, watch, okay. you might feel something. Oh my God, <laughs> This is so weird. Lift your hand up. You mentioned on the phone that when we were talking before about uh, human psychology. Yeah. So did that come after your interest in magic or did it before? Came after. Mm, yeah. But I think it also developed away from magic as well. Just interacting with people. Cause I'm all, I always want to know what people are thinking. But I've never bothered to get into mind reading. Because for me, because in magic, you've got magic and you've got mentalism. I don't think you should do both because I think that they're their own separate entities. Because if, if one minute you're like doing card tricks and the next minute you're reading someone's mind, then they're gonna think that the mind stuff is like a trick. I think you should stick to one or the other, personally. I think everybody kind of wants to know what other people are thinking. Mm. Um, and yeah, I always just wonder when I'm like on the bus or something, like what's going through people's heads. Because they're really thinking about the past or they're thinking about the future. Mm. They're never really thinking about what's happening now. Never really thinking about I'm on a bus. 
I'd love it if you could get like a little screen on your on someone's forehead and you just see like the mental like cinema just going on in there. Like I think it'd be well cool just to see like what people are actually like contemplating. So I wonder if people are thinking like like really dark things, or are they just thinking like funny things, or th I, I think most people are worrying about something. Mm. Personally, I think they're always just like in their heads thinking about something that's gonna go wrong or something that has gone wrong. I think performing magic is the only real time when I can be 100% just present in the moment. Like, where I'm not thinking of anything else, I'm just thinking of here and now. But like, I don't know if it's consistent with everybody, but yeah, I find it difficult to stay like completely in the moment. But like, I've been doing meditation recently and it's like, it's quite, it's good. Like, I like it. It's, I, I, I was like dubious about it at first. I was like, nah, what's all this? Like, I'm not gonna be able to just sit there and do nothing. Like, I was like, my mind's just gonna be racing. But it's kind of not judging yourself for thinking of other things. N not really being like, oh, you can't think that, you can't think that. Yeah. Like, I just like to think of it like the, the, like the tide, when the tide comes in and comes out. Like, there's nothing you can do to stop it. And the more you fight against it, the more frustrated you're gonna get. You're gonna be like, why can't I control this? Just like watch it go in and then watch it go out again and then in and then out. And then you're just like, oh, everything's fine. Like, it doesn't matter if I can't control it because it's just gonna do its thing anyway. When I perform, it's, it's not tricks. It is an experience that people wouldn't necessarily have had before because like, there's so many people who do magic, but not, not many people actually do magic. They'll just perform tricks and they'll think that that's, that's enough. It's like, like what we were talking about earlier where like you get curious about somebody, then when you finally got them, then you stop being curious again. It's like when people have learned, when people have learned the tricks, they think that's it then, I've done it, I need to move on to the next one. But there's just learning the trick is just like such a small part of performing magic. You need to learn how can I get maximum impact from this thing that I've just learned. And then that comes to the point where you're like, it's all about human psychology, like asking yourself, what does the moment want? Because every every audience is gonna be different. Some people are gonna be really high energy, some people are gonna be really low energy. So you either have to use their energy or you have to bring them down or bring them up to get them to the place that you wanna be. So it's like there's so much more that goes into it than just doing a card trick. Like you're constantly just like thinking, where are these people at? What does this moment want? Is this moment different to that moment? Is anybody else looking? Can I invite them in? So there's so much stuff that goes into what people don't realize. That's true. So, so whatever you plan is going to be different to what you actually plan because you've got to yeah. respond to anything. Yeah, 100%. Like you say, if your awareness is really important, then there's a magician. Yeah, of course. Like if you're performing, you need to constantly be using your peripheral vision because if you've got somebody who is at an angle which could lead for lead to an exposure where they've seen something, they could potentially see something that you're about to do and then feed it back to the people because they could be like a heckler, so they want to like catch you out. You all need to, you need to constantly be like moving your body, shielding the like the naughty bits where people can't see that because otherwise the trick's gonna be ruined. Yeah. So you're just constantly just in this just like this flux where you're just like backwards and forwards. And it's kind of like a dance that takes place between you and the audience, and you need to make sure that you're constantly leading it and make sure it's going in the place that you want it to go. And not not like flashing anything. That sounds terrible. Not flashing any. <laughs> not flashing any of the bad bits. Can't be. You don't want that in life in general. Don't ne never never flash your bad bits. <laughs> never do that. Like that's just probably the worst thing that you can do. That's yeah. a good little intro of it. Huh? Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's great. That yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. <laughs>